Um, welcome to the As Yet Undecided podcast with Mike and Sophie. Firstly, we have to say congratulations. We've actually, this is episode 10. Yay! Uh, and we've survived uh, somehow. I wasn't expecting it to actually get to 10 episodes, but here we are. And And just like the fifth podcast, it seems that we're going on every fifth podcast we have a special host. A- and for this host, we have Yuri. Hey fam, how's it going? Long time fan. Um. <laughs> Day one, <laughs> since the first one. Yes. Ten weeks strong I've been listening to your podcast every Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. <laughs> the Starstruck, actually. Thank you. Oh, a- actually, in saying that, um, I know that we brought up the lo- from the Lost podcast last week, but from the Lost, Lost podcast a couple of weeks ago that I maybe will put on the Patreon, but that's for later on. Um, we, we talked about who knew me first. Was it Sophie or was it Yuri? Not really. I think it was Yuri by a couple of hours. A couple of hours? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't mm. remember. Probably through Awesome somehow. Yes, because I remember that you used to go to the O Week nights and you used to volunteer a couple yeah. of nights and that's how we knew each other first. Yeah, yeah. I, I, even though you were... Where were you living then? Were you... You were living south. No, no, I was. Oh, uh, because you were living with dad. Was I? Oh, yeah. that's south then. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just like to help out. Yeah, get in the student life, you know. Yeah, well, well, exactly, and, and especially <laughs> with um, our mutual friend Snapchat about what happened on Friday night. That was hilarious. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I haven't seen that, but uh, I'll be sure to check that out. Uh, and actually, in saying that, Yuri, where are you from, and how was your week? Like, from as in, like, my mother's womb, or... No! (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know how to ask that question. Like, where are you from? Auckland? Oh, wait, what's your nationality? Half Japanese, half Kiwi? Yeah. Like, what's my zodiac sign? Scorpio? (laughs) My mountain? Uh, Monga Kiki? I don't know. Dude, that's that's exactly the same as me, actually, because um, I confuse people. People say, oh, are you from England? It's just like, no. I don't know what my mountain is. I think it's Monga Kiki. Just because, or, or, um... No, I moved around a lot, so I don't know. I have a mountain. Me I mean, too. my walker is uh, in New Zealand, probably. But... <laughs> oh, not Endeavour. No. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I don't know. I was born here. Well, does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, 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 you mean Auckland isn't here? I was born here, then I moved to Japan when I was like two. Yeah. Came back when I was five, and I've been here since. So, I mean, I can consider myself Kiwi, but I'm half Japanese yeah. by blood. By blood. By blood. But, but, but uh, only by blood. The, not the, by Yaku- the Yakuza runs strong in me. I got a, <laughs> I got a full back tattoo. You can, you can check that out after the podcast. Yeah, you, you, you got that as soon as you... Uh, on your third birthday. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I came out of it. <laughs> oh, okay. And how was your week anyway? Cause oh, how was the week? Oh, I just got started, to be honest. Uh, Easter. And I came... I got back to work today. I was going to go yesterday, but I didn't quite have the heart. <laughs> I can't be bothered getting up, so... I think no one had the heart, really. No, I don't think anyone has the heart still, because the uh, <laughs> offices were pretty empty today, so... Oh, really? Yeah, I finished early. So what do you do? Uh, I'm, uh, I suppose, associate at a strategy consultancy. Oh, uh, yes. That's part-time, though. I'm still a student. As a student. Dude, being a student is a full-time job. It is a full-time job. It's a yeah. tough job, man. It's a yeah, tough I job. Do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, mm. do. And how have you been? Uh, how was your Easter? Because I know for a fact I spent one evening with you. Oh, you're talking about me? Yes. Oh, okay. He's looking at you with his one eye. Yes, but well, the thing is, the podcasters don't know, though. No, yeah. oh, they can't see. No, you mm. have to assume that our audience is blind, because they literally are. You guys haven't quite moved up to our studio podcast yet. No. Uh, no. No. no when you could. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the camera is good enough. Maybe, Maybe it is. <laughs> Um, well, the week had, week went around about the same as your evening with me. Uh, well, just, just for context, Mike came over to my place with, alongside our mutual friend Josie for dinner. Mm. We had quite a nice evening, we watched a film as well, Skyfall, oldie but a goodie, I consider that the best Bond Is film. it old? Um, old-ish. Old-ish. Okay. And in the pop culture world, where everything has where um, things are only fresh for about half a year, yeah, Skyfall I mean, is relatively old. I feel like Alfred Hitchcock is like <laughs> old. Sure. Yes. I don't know if Skyfall's old. That's like, it's not even five years old. I remember watching it in the movies. 
Let the sky fall. Yeah, that was like three years, years ago. Fall. That's Adele, right? Yes, yeah. that's Adele. Yes. Yeah, it's like three years old. That's not old. <laughs> <laughs> what are you on about? Uh, maybe old was the wrong word for it, but it's, it's will become a classic, I think. I, I'm not too sure. All right. Mike, how was your week? Uh, well, um, to, just to add to the idebacle that we were talking about last week, um, had the appointment on Thursday and got Botox inserted into my eyelid, hence the reason that my right eyelid is temporarily closed for the next three months. Or you're just uh, always seducing girls with a wink. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, 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 wink. so that um, wink emoji, yeah. <laughs> that, that's permanently me for the next three months. When you walk down the halls of the women's hostel, everyone thinks you're trying to sexually yeah. hit on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hence my um, Tinder swipe rights have been skyrocketing <laughs> ever since. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I have a question actually, because um, you know, since we're doing a podcast, I feel like it's an appropriate question. What podcast do you guys listen to? Any preferences? Oh my god! Don't okay, wait, wait, okay, wait, let's do a top three just to kind of keep things up. Uh... No such thing as a fish. What's that? Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is that exactly? Okay, guys. Exactly. BBC. I expect some advertising me bro, me up value okay Ad- some advertising revenue no such thing as a fish is a podcast hosted by the qil so you know the, have you heard of the show qi yeah, yeah. what's well, hosted by Stephen fry now it's sandy toxic come on oh, sandy no. why did you leave friday night comedy <laughs> that's so pointing i don't know right i hate it when hosts change over and you can't watch them anymore and anyway um so the hosts uh let's see four of them dan james andy and anne they do random facts, and then they discuss the random facts. So, for example, last week, what was a random fact of theirs? Oh. Maybe you should leave it uh, so the listeners can listen to it. Yeah. Sure. You don't want to give it all away. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, you just give it a little bit of a tease. Like a quick tease. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what's your number two and number three, Sophie? Uh, another one is This Way Up by, by INZ. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh, Radio, Radio New Zealand National. Or, as I like to call it, Geek Corner. That's actually quite... They have some interesting stuff. Yeah. When I do listen to the radio, I do listen to RNZ, and sometimes they have pretty cool stuff. Oh, I know, right? Some, I don't like their music, but... Yeah. Well, I don't listen for the music, but um, you know how RNZ is usually made up of really old listeners, about to be retired, maybe retired, rich, white, yeah. and then there's a little corner for us geeks, <laughs> which they don't listen to because we're too hipster. And what's your third one? Um, that's, there's a, there's one called Criminal. Oh yeah, I've, I've heard of Criminal. Criminal, The yeah. girl, the lady's voice really annoys me. She's like, hi, welcome <laughs> to Criminal. It's really breathy, like I'm on a sex phone line or something. Like, <laughs> well, so, so borderline ASMR-ish. Yeah, but like a really uncomfortable laugh. <laughs> like I'm sitting on the chair, I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. Yeah. Like, don't stand up too soon, put a book, put a book above your pelvis. <laughs> well, the, for, for some reason, her voice is comforting to me. Like um, Stephen, it's a Stephen Fry level level of comfort. I don't know me. if you want to be comfortable listening about serial killers, eh? <laughs> well, she doesn't. She doesn't just do serial killers. No, I stopped listening. But you know, I have listened to a couple of episodes. No, no, I, I'm I'm a very avid listener. Uh, but honestly, uh, maybe because I'm a woman and I'm and I'm asexual, so it's like I don't really get that whole six bone thing. How about you, Mike? What do you listen to? Uh, well, because of the whole source-fed shutting down bandwagon sort of thing. Oh, rip. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a podcast called Dynamic Banter, oh. where, where there's two hosts, and all they do is talk <laughs> for the so entire Pretty podcast. much this show. Yeah. Mike! Are we supposed to have play lyrics? It's okay. Oh, sorry. Is this like a uh, PG, G-rated show? Yes, well, I actually indicated under I choose that we're clean lyrics. Oh, I was going to drop some f bombs, but I'll, I'll withhold that now. Yeah, please yeah. do. Um, yeah, the clean lyrics is for uh, you know wider audi- audience appeal. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. So, um, the episode just gone. Um, the guy got a new horn, and and oh, it God. was it was that horrible that <laughs> <laughs> they, they just keep playing it. For um, context, one of the hosts of Dynamic Banter is just really obsessed with horns. As ones might be obsessed with pinup girls or trains or stamps. Yeah. Like sexually? 
No. Oh, okay, I was no. going to say. Um, and he um, just recently brought a, a tank drum, mm. like a xylophone, but made out of tin. Yeah. And it cost them $300. What? Wait, yeah. made of tin? Yeah. DIY makes DIY. Yeah, exactly. He, he got it from a um, reconnaissance festival. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, what's he, what's, what's he going to hunt for now? I don't know. Um, considering that he has a um, a full modelled version of E.T. in a dress in his um, coffee coffee table. E.T. in a dress? Yeah. Like the extraterrestrial wearing a dress. Monster Factory re- reference or actual E.T. in a dress? Actual E.T. Okay. I'm uh, very confused. What else do you listen to? <laughs> um, I listen to Dear Hank and John, oh, which okay. is the Green Brothers podcast. Yes. And as well as um, e- uh, Air Biscuits. What's Air Biscuits? Um, which is Red and Link. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Also, no such thing as a fish. Well, uh, th- 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 that's too, but hey, top three, remember? Top three. Sure. And uh, what about you, Yuri? What do I... Uh, I listen to, like, um, businessy type stuff. Oh, Freakonomics. Freakonomics. Oh, yeah, I love Freakonomics. Actually, I was listening to Freakonomics on the way as well. I also listen to Planet of Money. Mm. Um, yeah, a bunch of businessy stuff. I will say, has any, has anyone listened to S Town yet? No. Um, the new show, well, show I guess mini series by This American Life. Um, I don't know if you guys listen to Serial. No. Serial season one's good. I couldn't get into season two. It was a bit too uh, American propaganda. But S Town's really good. Yeah. And I, I won't talk about because I feel like it's one of those things like at least you know about better. Also, Finding Richard Simmons is a really good oh, yeah. podcast. Have you, did you listen to that? No, well, I know who Richard Simmons is. So. Or do you know where he is? <laughs> yeah, no, well, honestly, I didn't yeah, know this. Well, where he is just, he? He just apparently like he had a dance studio, right? Yeah. And apparently, it was this like really low key. Like you'd expect Richard Simmons, like he's a big dude. Everyone knows him, so yeah. you know he's gonna have this big thing. But no, it's really low key, and he had this like really tight-knit group of followers and just one day he didn't turn up to class and no one's seen him since oh wow yeah. and this this show is about this guy who used to go to his class who's like trying to find richard simmons huh. okay interesting how you say that the serial series two was absolute crap because um you know, oh, it's absolute no, crap no, it's not my thing it was no, so, no, sorry it wasn't absolute bad but a lot of people did say they didn't enjoy series two as much as series one yeah yeah but people do enjoy east town There's, East Town's good. Mm. No, the thing is, like, the reason I didn't like Serial Season 2 is because it, um, it was about the US military and this guy who ran off somewhere and, like, joined the Taliban. I don't know, I, I, oh, he got captured by the Taliban yeah. and then he got released or something. It was kind of like the whole controversy around that. And I just get really uh, sick and bored of American politics, American, you know, hoorah. Yeah. So, like, just, there's just one too many American war story and there's just, I don't know. Okay. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. Well, talking about um, the disappearance of Richard Simmons, yep. finding Richard Simmons, that reminds me of the documentary um, Tickled. Oh, yes. Who, I, who got tickled? No, it, it is a... Is it about Alma? It is a documentary of a underground tickling <laughs> society um, done by um, David Ferrier, who works for MediaWorks. Yes. Oh, no, I heard about that, and the guy died or something? Like, oh, I have no idea. Well, what, ha- what happened? Is it run by Elmo, though? No. It's, it's He's a, the kingpin. No, it's a, it's a pretty <laughs> funny and strange documentary about uh, this underground tickling thing run by a person who's homophobic. Oh, weird. What's even weirder <laughs> was that there's actually this huge homoerotic string about it, because what you have is one muscular guy tickling another muscular guy, and they're both semi-naked. You know, that's my favourite kind of journalism, yeah. honestly. Like, when I wanted to do journalism, back when I did communications, yeah. that was the kind of re- that was the reason why those kind of things were the reason why I wanted to do journalism. Then yes. I realised, oh, I should have journalism pre, uh, pretty dry cut. So you want to be the Louis Ferro? What's that famous documentary maker? Well, I don't know. Louis- Guys, like, who's um who's the guy who Louis rose- Theroux. Louis Theroux. So you want to become a- so you want to do Louis Theroux type of journalism. Who's Louis Theroux? He's a very famous documentaryist who actually does um, things that's akin to Tickled, but he didn't do Tickled. Um, so Louis Theroux's this American li- uh, American Life or something rather. Louis Theroux on autism. He actually basically goes into the nitty gritty of yeah. the controversial yeah. sides. That's of kind of stuff I like life. to do. Yeah. But then, like, the thing is, like, I. 
get really obsessed about one thing for like a week and yeah. then I get bored of it. That's why I changed the agenda today because I was into Bitcoins last week, but this week I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so, so I, actually, actually, why don't you do your own podcast then? Because, well, you can like talk about whatever you want for, mm. the, for the week. Like, what are you obsessed about this week? But I can just uh, guest host on your show. Oh, well, which segues quite nicely into my first agenda, how to smuggle drugs. Do you guys want to smuggle drugs with me? Okay. I the, shouldn't say it too loud. I heard someone going outside. I think the <laughs> easiest way to smuggle drugs is to put them into prescriptions bottle. No, man. Like, they've, uh, they've really upped their game because... What's it called? Oh, Mike, you might know. What's the prerequisite to methamphetamine? And they usually find it in the cold syrup oh, or cold medicine? Yeah. I actually did a bit of research before I came here so I can uh, know my sh**. Oh, yeah, okay. um, <laughs> yeah, so that's... It, it is... Um, it's... Generally done for C class drugs that that are R eighteen and in New yeah. Zealand you need to sign for them before you uh, uh it's called pseudofedrine. Yeah, pseudofedrine. Pseudofedrine. Anyway, uh, apparently the newest way to get meth across the border is they uh, smuggle across a separate chemical which yeah. they later convert it into pseudo Yeah. Da, da, da. So basically, they're not they're not looking out for this chemical, but they can turn it into meth later on. Yeah. That's nuts, man! It's crazy. Yeah, so so that would be the I would think on a logistical sense that that would be the most expensive part. Probably, but the thing is, like, if I was going to get into, or sorry, if we were getting into uh, getting into smuggling drugs, I feel like you know, meth, weed, even oversaturated market, we need to get into cocaine and heroin. Guys. Yeah. So how? So was, this, was this inspired by the fact that Nazis took drugs? No, I was listening to your podcast today while I was eating uh, eating some uh, pho. Yeah. Vietnamese pho. Yeah, pho. And, yeah, and yeah. then I was thinking Vietnam. I don't know. Listening to your podcast, I don't know what the connection is, but I was thinking about us uh, smuggling drugs. So yeah, because I was talking about Nazi. Me. I was talking about Nazi drug habits last week. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that doing it um, by um, the Rick and Morty person, Mr. Poopy Butthole, is sort of outdated now. Yes. What's They're that? looking for that as well. Stuffing it up your anus. Oh, I know. That's, no, no, no they got dog. Uh, those yeah. little beagles can sniff right up your butt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Prostate exam and everything. Yeah, so, so you have to think about, <coughs> about ways that... Uh, like, the way I thought about it, because uh, this is one of my favourite topics to talk about, is how to smuggle drugs in. Um... Would the Navy honestly check every single fishing boat who came in from Australia? Well, that's true, and especially with, um, they found, how much ton of cocaine did they find on that, um, South American boat on the way to Australia? I have no idea. Mm, they found about 100 kilos of cocaine. 100 kilos? Yeah. That's a big boat. I'm talking yeah. like a small, like, like, um, like a sailing boat that retirees, like, sail around the world on. Yeah. That, that kind of boat. Because yeah. um, even then, you might only be able to get across, I don't know, like a smaller yield. But, you know, apparently the street value of cocaine is $250 a gram in New Zealand. Yeah. That's a lot of money. And it's probably cut as well. Like, I mean, that's all cut up with uh, uh, baking soda. Yeah. And stuff like that. So that's my proposal. Yeah. It's a pretty good proposal. Um, that's like Shark Tank, isn't it? It's like, yeah. It's like drug Shark Tank. Yeah. No, but, but honestly, what happens if you actually say, because cocaine is all like powder, right? Yeah. What if you put it into a paracetamol packet to make it look like paracetamol? Nah, they do it. They no. do that. Um, they I, and they've been caught. Oh yeah, because I watch Border Control sometimes. <laughs> Border Patrol is that what it's called? Yeah, Border Patrol. Border and they Patrol, like, yeah. I mean, one of the ways they do it is this is for um, this is for the pre to meth, the pseudo whatever it's called, yeah. not for cocaine, but I suppose it's the same. Um, they they compress it down and like make it look like the plaster of some toy. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And they find it. So, I mean, I feel like cocaine will be easier to detect. Yeah. So, I think the best way is to try not to get it, like, you know, try not to get it under their nose, but just sneak right past. Yeah. So, Pablo Escobar-style uh, personal plane well, is how, another option. Well, how about you make your own? And I have researched this. What so, apparently, you make your own? apparently, New Zealand climate is actually perfect for growing cocaine plants. Uh, coca. Coca. Coca, coca. Coca, plant? coca, yeah. Wait. There's cocoa and cocoa. One's chocolate. One's illegal. Cocoa. <laughs> it's cocoa. Okay. I know it's cocoa because I'm the <coughs> chocolate. But anyway, um, yeah. So the cocoa plant. Apparently, New Zealand climate is actually perfect because uh, one thing you need is humidity. New Zealand's generally kind of humid. Also, you need to be um, was it close to sea level? 
So those two things combined are really good um, environments and have high yield, but also big size coca plants. Yeah. Uh, only thing is with, you know, they obviously make grow coca plants in South America. The reason why is because they can hide it under big, dense bushes, whereas New Zealand just doesn't really have that kind of space. Because then, say you grow like a big, big plant, the yield you get is tiny. I get see. Like a tiny little yield. So I thought about growing it. The, uh, I feel like smuggling is easier. Now, m- m- maybe maybe we're thinking about this all wrong. Yeah. Oh, there you go. This is what, this is what I came for. Yeah. Right? yeah, maybe we're thinking about this all wrong. Um, because of the increase of synthetics. Yes. And the way that they get around it is that the government bans it. Mm-hmm. And then they rechange the, the, the chain, which has been banned, very slightly. Yeah, yeah. So they get around the legal loophole. Right, right, right. Maybe do something like that. Can, but I mean, I feel like I feel like cocaine's cocaine. Like you can't really change cocaine, otherwise it becomes synthetic cocaine or something. Yeah. I mean, I feel like if you could make synthetic cocaine, they would have done it by now. Mm. I feel like cocaine's just so good that you can't fake it. Yeah. Really. Oh, oh no, I haven't done cocaine. If you want to give me two hundred fifty dollars per gram, then uh, I'll go out and test it for journalism, <laughs> <laughs> for the, and I'll do a deep dive on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, um, then, okay, what, where's a place that cocaine is legal? I think there's a. Is, is it legal anywhere? There is a place where it's legal, where all the drugs are legal. Is it? Is it in Portugal? Oh yeah, it, that's um, the whole Portugal thing is is a fascinating um, because I had to do I had to write about it for ethics. Mm-hmm. Um, they have completely decriminalised all drugs. All drugs. So, so instead mm. of it being a criminal issue, mm. it is a public health issue. Oh, so it's like me. Um, I don't know, taking too much uh, trimadol or codeine. Yeah. A like prescription codeine. Yeah. Right. So, by the sounds of things, is it working? It, yeah. it, it, it is working. Because Portugal doesn't, because Portugal's not on the news for being like the most heavily drug use in the world. And in fact, I believe one of the reasons why it does work is because the whole forbidden apple effect isn't there anymore. That's why a lot of, that's why a lot of people actually take drugs in the first place. I don't know about that. Well, actually, I've heard the argument about decriminalisation and how it's actually better. And I do agree, like, um, the war on drugs is failing. It's just a lot of money. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, like, how are you going to account for the people trying to smuggle in cocaine? on a fishing boat like us mm-hmm. and trying to train fish to uh, with cocaine in their guts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to swim our way. All I want is, <laughs> is laser beams attached to their heads. <laughs> oh. Laser sharks. <laughs> yes. But like, like, yeah, it's like forbidden apple thing. Like, I, I've never thought, damn, I want to do, um, I want to do some pee because uh, it's illegal. Uh, if anything, oh, well, I don't know. Well, that's because you... Yeah, that's because you feel valued by the system. If you don't feel valued by the system, uh, you probably feel as if you want to do something to rebel, and there's one nice way to rebel is to take drugs. Yeah, but I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, stuff you, Bill English. I'm going to do some meth. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> like, you I don't know if it works like that. Not, no, you don't work like that, but a lot of people do. Does yeah. anyone does anyone think of Bill English while they take a hand out their meth pipe? <laughs> Jerry Brownlee, maybe. <laughs> 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 Paula Bennett, maybe. <laughs> they probably do meet anyway, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> Phil Twyford will be beside me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you studied the whole decriminalisation pro thing, what's the argument behind it? Well, you also get you also get regulated, so you can actually make the drugs safe for once. You, yeah. can, you can get a whole lot of tax money. Yeah. I mean, wait, 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 wait. Tax money. I get that with marijuana, but with like okay. class A drugs like heroin and uh, meth, you're gonna get tax money off meth. You can. I what? You go down to the shop and get some meth. That sounds yeah. like a really ter- <laughs> terrible idea. I was gonna go down to the shop and get some meth. You can actually do. I mean, honestly, what? that's that's happened during Germany during the 1920s. Yeah, just go down to Ferro Fresh. They cook it on site. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gourmet, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, go- not, no, it, wasn't, it wasn't quite like Pharaoh's, but more like a pharmacy. Like, you go down to the life pharmacy to get your meth. I feel like this is going to be a Sophie's correction, because I really don't believe they sell meth. <laughs> well, they used to. work called life pharmacy. No, no, they don't. <laughs> but during the 1920s, oh, okay. Germany, okay, yeah, 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 no, I get that. But, yeah. like, still, 
Yeah, okay, let's take Germany, for example. They obviously, I guess, decriminalized meth or whatever. No, 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 they didn't. They had meth as a legit, as a drug they can actually oh, okay. take as, as general consumption during the 1920s. And that doesn't make anything better, does it? No. It doesn't make them hate Jews any less. Uh, in fact, uh, they said that... Probably hate, made them hate them more. Uh, yeah, everyone went a little crazy. So, yeah, yeah. don't... Don't do meth, guys. Don't do meth. I, It'll make you anti I'm all for decriminalizing weed. That's fine. Yeah. Heroin, meth, maybe not, eh? I, I've never, I haven't heard a single mm. argument that well, kind of made me sway. Well, here's another interesting thing about meth. It's an amphetamine, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that, um, if you remember listening to our last podcast, it could actually be a legit medicine for ADHD. I was just about to bring that up. Yeah, be, yeah, because of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, little Jimmy doesn't have that HD anymore, but he has the mad shakes. Yeah, he has like yeah, stabs um, over his body. Yeah. The, the the problem with that doing research on that is that it's mm. there are so many loopholes in order yeah. to get that tested. Um, Listen like, to last week's podcast. Um, look, take for instance with people that are trying to study weed. The only place we can get researched uh, research capable weed is all grown on the University of Mississippi's grounds oh really yeah or uh, if you go into the bushes of Waikato you can find some yeah yeah class <laughs> A uh, medicinal marijuana <laughs> no cause, cause I was mean cause like cause you want all the ba all the all the strands to be the same oh right to right. be tested properly yeah. yeah yeah you don't know what you're getting with the tiny house there. yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. Poison. Oh, by the way, you might uh, be you might be arrested for being a rat. For being a rat, I'm uh, not I'm not ratting it on out. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's sort of like an assumption that you know. I'm just I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm just guessing as. No, uh, no, I, 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 I can I can guarantee that that guess is uh, ninety nine percent confident <laughs> from, from your experience. Oh yeah, of course. Ninety nine percent proof. Oh, oh, come on. Mm. Come on. Do I have to grab my phone out? Do I really have to? Why? <laughs> no, but let's just no, say I've no, never I've, I've never partaken. <laughs> no. But honestly, we don't need to probably incriminate ourselves anymore. Maybe our personal data will in the future. Oh, oh no, 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 but... Is segue? Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, there's one thing I'll say about this. Why would you make a tinny house? That's the most stupid damn idea I've ever heard in my life. Like, hey guys, look at me. I'm selling drugs in my house like a store. That's a good way to get yourself busted. Yeah. And they do. Mm -hmm. All the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Put your personal data out there. Hey, it's a tin... I live in a tinny house. Yeah. Alright, that's our segue, personal that. data. Per oh, this is my thesis title. Yes. Uh, personal data on the internet, the unknown Johari window. What is a Johari window for once? Maybe Mike can explain this because he's the sociology student. Uh. Because I just Googled it. I Googled the picture just to make sure that my uh, thesis title actually made sense and it did make sense. What on earth? <laughs> Why is this your thesis? What are you studying as well? Oh, I'm studying business, but you know, I'm a, I'm a man of many talents. Yeah. So basically, Jahari window is kind of, uh, it's your self-identity. So there's mm. four quadrants in the Jahari window. Um, there's, uh, yeah, four quadrants. Yeah. So let's say on the top X axis is uh, what you know and what mm. everyone knows. And then on the Y axis is what you know and what everyone knows. So let's say, so let's say you, you know, kind of hard to talk about it in audio without a picture so I mean if you alright alright do you do you want me to explain it yeah you can probably explain it better you've probably written essays and stuff on it yeah so what the Jahari window is it is split into four quadrants like Yuri said and it's split into two axes one to the axes you're the mathematics student what happens um one to the one is the openness to yourself and the other is the openness to others so at the top quadrant like Yuri said you have the open category or the arena category um and then on the two two um adjacent to them you have the blind which is um themselves is becoming more closed and yourself is still open mm -hmm. um and then you have the um the closed one which is uh, or the unknown which is um close to yourself and close to others and the other one is the is it the facade window i don't know what the technical name is yeah um yeah which is you uh close yourself but everyone else is open 
And the bad part that when I was researching this, you were talking about the unknown Jahari window. I would think it'd be more of a facade more than unknown, but I I do respect why you thought it was an unknown. Wait, which one's the facade again? That's when you've closed yourself, but everyone else is open. Oh, okay, no, okay, and this jumps into my point. But anyway, did you get that, Sophie? It's like it's a mask. Stuff? Yeah, or just the whole idea of the Jahari window. Yeah. So it's how much you open, like, you know, say, like, everyone, like, you know, what you know and what everyone knows is, like, your name, for example. But yeah. what only you know but no one else knows is, like, well, say for myself, I might be wearing pink underwear. None of you guys know that, yeah. but I know that. Mm-hmm. Say, let's say that. Anyway, this is my thesis idea, my hy- hypothesis for my thesis, is that because... You know, well, basically, like, you know, you guys know how Facebook and Google make their money, right? They collect yeah. data on yeah. you and they sell it. And they have al- crazy, crazy, crazy algorithms to figure out, you know, what kind of person you are from all these different, I suppose, details of your internet usage. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you guys seen Day 6 Machina. Have you seen that movie? Ex Machina? Day 6 Machina. Machina. Oh, Deus? Uh, are you sure there's a Deus involved in that? Because I've watched... Oh, Ex Machina. Ex Machina, yeah. Is it like that girl robot? robot yes, Ex Machina. Oh, it's yeah. Ex Machina. Have you seen that, Mike? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you have. I haven't, you but I have it. it. You have you it. Have it. Okay. It's a good movie. It's a damn oh. good movie. Yeah. But basically, like, you know, like, the, the internet's um, in every single facet of your life, right? It's on your phone. Mm-hmm. It's on, like, every single website you almost go to. So... Um, I was wondering, I was wondering this other day, like, what do they know that you don't know? Because they can make all these connections and, like, make all these links between you and every single other person who uses the internet. That they must know, they must find some kind of pattern or something like that that you don't realise. Dude, have you played the weird game Watch Dogs? No, I heard it was bad. I heard it was glitchy and buggy. It was glitchy and buggy. Then. Okay. Million patch notes later, it's okay now. But so that's one of the themes behind that game. What 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 you what they know that you don't know? Yes. Well I should I should play that game. You should play the game. <laughs> yeah. I can give you I can give you my U- Ubisoft account so you can actually play it if you want. Oh, sick, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not too sure how you're going to, you know, override my save file. I'll probably have to save my save file oh, elsewhere. Right. So I'll, yeah. I'll uh, pirate bay it, it's okay. No no, I'll give it I'll give you a legit copy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, but basically, um, one of the premises of the game is I might be entering into spo- mildly spoiler territory here, but um, one of the big bad people of the game is actually an organization called Bloom, and they've developed a software called uh, what's it? Bellworther. So, what happens with Bellworther is that they collect all the data about you, and from then on, they can make predictions about you. Um, how how likely are you going to make do drugs? How likely are you going to be um, burglarized? In fact, that in fact that, that what I just said becomes a game mechanic because the protagonist can actually um, see when someone's about to get um, murdered, say, mm. and he can actually help prevent it. Oh, um, like, um, yeah. Is that Tom Cruise? Yeah, yeah. 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 Report, yeah. Uh, no, well, persons of interest. Imagine persons of interest as a video game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, another, another thing that uh, Bellworth can do is actually, um, because with all the data they, they can do, they he can actually work out how to manipulate you. True. Yeah. That's, that concept is actually expanded in the sequel Watch Dogs 2. I there's a pl- 2? There's a 2. Oh, what? Yes. Um, apparently one was so bad, people really didn't bother about two, but I've heard, I've heard that two is actually really good. Oh, okay. And I am going to put this out here, I enjoyed Watch Dogs 1 very much. Be- before we finish, um, Yuri, do you want to plug anything by chance? No, not really. Alright, um... It's amazing club, though. Yeah, well, you know, I feel like that's your thing to plug more than anything. Okay. Now. Yes, and um, who won the raffle, by the way? Yeah, so who you? won the raffle? Jonathan, J- Jonathan Jayendran. Oh, yeah, cool. It's on the Facebook page, by the okay. way, guys. Yes, yeah, so and which number was he? 40 to 45, I think. All right. You remember? That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I've, I've, I've been on that raffle so long, it's just I, I could... I just got so obsessed with it. And um, this has been the As Yet Undecided podcast. You can contact us on asyetundecided at gmail.com or at... AYU podcast. We can contact us individually. Sophie? 
Sophie 9709 on most platforms apart from Instagram. Yes, and apart from that Russian Sophie, you can contact me on the Manus <laughs> on all platforms. Thank you, Yuri, Thank for, you. For, for joining us. It's a great time. How, I, would, how would you like people to contact you? Um, would you rather remain anonymous? Uh, I don't know. Pornhub.com slash uh, Yuri. Dot read. <laughs> yeah, Yuri dot read. <laughs> that's the, uh, that's, I check that daily, so uh, if you want to contact me, uh, that's the place to hit me up, guys. Um, yeah, and have a good week, guys.